Mabuhay ang Senado, mabuhay ang Republika ng Pilipinas. At 1 p.m. today, the COMLEC came out with an end back decision to suspend all proceedings on the People's Initiative. I think that deserves a loud applause. <laughs> Scheduled a press conference to deliver a message regarding the People's Initiative. But given the gravity of this matter, I have chosen to take the floor on a personal and collective privilege instead to apprise the nation on the developments on the People's Initiative and the Senate's commitment to protect our democratic processes. In light of the Senate's unanimous and staunch rejection of the undemocratic People's Initiative, I've had the opportunity to meet with the President President Bongbong Marcos this morning, I was asked to see him in his home in Bay Pangulo. And I have his permission to disclose what we had discussed this morning. I was there for the record together with Senate, former Senate President and now Chief Legal Counsel Juan Ponce Enrile together with former uh, Chief Justice and now Executive Secretary uh, Bersamin. In no uncertain terms, my dear colleagues, the President expressed the need to protect the bicameral nature of Congress, which upholds the system of checks and balances within the legislative branch and strengthens the, the check and balance between the different branches of government. We know that the President has ably served as a senator himself. And he knows firsthand the value of bicameralism. He knows that if the Senate's approval is needed to merely change a name of a street, then the Senate cannot have a dispensable role in charter change. As such, the President is set to appeal to the House of Representatives and the other People's Initiatives initiators to stop this dreaded PI, or their version of the People's Initiative. In his words, Madam President, my dear colleagues, it is getting out of hand. From the start, it has been the Senate's position that the so-called People's Initiative will be divisive to the nation and it will cost our nation our economic gains. We in the Senate thank the President for his commitment and we remain firm in our vigilance against any attempts to destabilize our democracy. We maintain that the ongoing People's Initiative is flawed and unconstitutional and offers no solution to the problems most urgently affecting our people. We'd like to also thank Madam President, my distinguished colleagues, the Commission on Elections for taking cognizance of the fact that their rules are currently insufficient for this People's Initiative and for their commitment to moto proprio review the rules. And for those who do not know and are watching in public and to my colleagues that do not know, at 1 p.m. today, the COMLEC came out with an end back decision to suspend all proceedings on the People's Initiative. I think that deserves a loud applause. Very well. Mabuhay po ang Senado. Finally, we appeal to the House of Representatives to adhere to the Constitution and abide by the intent of the framers. We remind the House of Representatives that the Constitution is not there to expand our powers as elected officials, quite the opposite. It serves as a limit on the exercise of these powers. These limitations protect, or serve rather to protect the people, defend their rights, and promote their common welfare. As I have said from the very start, and we have said collectively with our manifesto, the people the Filipino people are our sovereign. 
All powers emanate from the people. Any measure that purports, purports rather, to promote, but in reality goes against their interest by sowing discord and confusion, must be stopped at all cost. And before I end, I would just like to present for the record the 44 legislative districts that have stood fast and remain strong. I call them, yes, the 44, the uh, uh, 44 strong that held off out of the 253 districts, my 44 po na hindi nagbigay ng kanilang uh, 3% ika na to comply with this people's initiative. The alleged, yeah, this uh, 3%. May I name them? From the NCR, the 6th Legislative District of Manila. Let me repeat, these are the ones that have not submitted to the COMELEC either for defiance or because they really, the people really do not want to sign this people's initiative. <coughs> The 6th District of Manila, in the city of Marikina, both the 1st and 2nd Legislative District. Congratulations, Senator Coco Pimentel, who is from Marikina. From the city of Venezuela, the 1st and 2nd Legislative District. Kudos to Senator Cochalla. <clears throat> the Lone District of Las Piñas as well. And we have two senators from Las Piñas, Madam, Pres Madam President. The Lone District of Malabon, of where uh, the Senate President Pro Tem is also from. The Lone District of the City of Pasig. The Lone District of the City of San Juan. And we have two sons of San Juan, three son sons of San and daughters of San Juan here. Senators Jingoy Estrada, Senator J.V. Ercito, and Senator... Uh, Grace Po. The Lone District of Taguig. We'd like to congratulate as well no? S Senators uh, Cayetano and the Lone District, Legislative District of Taguig and Pateros. So two districts. We have the two Cayetanos here with us. In the Cordilleras, Madam President, the Lone District of Benguet. Hindi pa nagsasubmit. The Lone Legislative District of the City of Baguio, also. The Lone District of Kalinga has not, Kalinga has not uh, submitted. In the Mountain Province, as well, the Lone District of the Mountain Province. In Region 1, Ilocos Norte's 1st Legislative District and 2nd Legislative District of Ilocos Norte. And we have a Ilocana here, Senator Aimee Marcos, former governor. Ilocos Sur's 1st Legislative District and 2nd Legislative District. In Ilocos Sur, Puyan. La Union as well, 2nd Legislative District. In Region 3, the 4th Legislative District of Bulacan, the towns of Marilao, Ubando, and City of Mekawaya. Ubando. And Region 4A, the 3rd Legislative District of Cavite, has not submitted. In Laguna, the Lone Legislative District of Calamba, as well as the Lone Legis Legislative District of Santa Rosa. In Rizal, the 1st Legislative District of Rizal, as well as the 4th Legislative District of Rizal. On Region 4B, Oriental Mindoro's 1st Legislative District, as well as its 2nd Legislative District in Oriental Mindoro. In Region 5, Camarines Sur's 1st Legislative District, 2nd Legislative District, and 3rd Legislative District. Is this correct? <laughs> From our sources in the uh, from our sources, this is the list. Masbates first legislative district as well, second legislative district, and third legislative district. On region six, the first legislative district of Capiz, as well as Gimaras 
lone legislative district. In Region 7, ah, uh, sorry, yes, Region 7, the lone legislative district of Sikihor. In Region 10, in Region 10, the only region na meron pong wala pang nag-submit ay in Region 10, out of our distrust to the process and our campaign to stop this fake PI, the first legislative district of Congressman Joman Alba, the third legislative district of Congressman Jose Zubiri, and the fourth legislative district of Larni Roque. So three out of four districts, hindi pa kami hindi nagsabit ang bukid nun. And one district of Cagayan de Oro, the first legislative district. So yan po, my dear colleagues, ang 44 strong na hindi pa nagbibigay po ng uh, signatures pala. Pakam po natin sila silently for our... We salute them, Madam President. We salute all of them for standing strong. And in closing, we are hopeful that the President's directives will reinforce the relationship between the Senate and the House as co-equal branches of legislation, one in our mandate of serving the people and no one else. Mabuhay ang Senado, mabuhay ang Republika ng Pilipinas. Maraming salamat.